We're now going to play Promoted to Glory, if you'd like to rise. And the words will be on the screen, if you'd like to sing along. may be seated. Today, um, we are, Jesus has welcomed two members of our congregation on the same day, Harold Blenheim, Dorothy Slater. I'll tell you a little bit about Dorothy. Her name was jo Dorothy Jacqueline Slater. She was born humble of Victoria. She passed away on November the 4th, 2021 at the age of 77 years. She was born in Regina, Saskatchewan to Ernest and Agnes Humble on March 24, 22, 1944. She moved to Victoria in 1972 with her husband, Bernie, where they raised their four children. In Victoria, Dorothy was an active member of the Salvation Army, Victoria Citadel, and the Esquimalt Salvation Army. She went back to school in 1987 and earned an Associate of Arts in Business Administration and worked for many years at H&R Block before retiring. She enjoyed being a member of the Kiwanis Victoria Club for several years and served as their treasurer before retiring from that role in 2019. I remember Dorothy well from her days at the Esquimalt Salvation Army. We both worshiped there for many years. She was a Corps Cadet leader and a lifelong member of the Salvation Army. She dedicated much of her time and talents in support of her church. She was so faithful in bringing her children to church every Sunday. I am so grateful to have been part of her children's life, and I continue to keep in touch with them all. All of the kids played in the band. And that was because of her doing, because she was so faithful in making sure that the children came every Sunday, no matter what was going on. They all played in the band, and that was one of her greatest joys. Dorothy survived by her children, Ray, Heather, Jim, and Bev, as well as nine grandchildren and four great-grandchildren, and her brothers, Vernon and Kenneth Humble. She is predeceased in death by her parents, Ernest and Agnes Humble, and her husband, Bernie, her sister, Irene, and brothers, Arthur and Jonathan. Due to travel restrictions, a celebration of life will be held at a later date, and Grace Ive service is yet to be determined. Well done, thy good and faithful servant. Harold. The first thing that comes to my mind when I think of Harold is a mighty prayer warrior. He was born in St. Michael's, Barbados. He raised his daughter, Harriet, and also his two 
his sister's two daughters and son. He was predeceased by his wife, Doreen, and survived by his wife, Sharon. When he was in Barbados, Barbados, he worked for the government. Some of the positions he held for many years in the Salvation Army in Barbados were bandmaster and songster leader. He came to Canada in the 1980s, at which time he married Doreen. He was chaplain of the Victoria Kiwanis Club for many years. Some of you will remember the fruitcakes he sold every year around Christmas to raise benefits for the club. Some of the positions he held in our Victoria Citadel, he was a member of the band, he was a member of the Songsters. He also worked for the government in the courts. He was a member of Men's Breakfast Club and a member of the prayer meeting group. Whenever there was a prayer meeting that we held here, Harold also came and gave his support all the time. Sharon told me that he never asked for anything and was happy with everything she did for him, never complained to her. A memorial service will be held in December when his daughter can get out from New York. Thank you for being God's faithful servant. We salute you, Harold. Just uh, thinking of that, you know, um, and we've had, during the COVID season, the pandemic, we have had quite a few of our, our congregation pass away. And, and we do want to have um, just a celebration even here of life for all of those members all together. We will do that and we will let you know when that is. And I think, you know, so many of them were prayer warriors. So many of them are members of different groups. And we think, who's going to take up uh, those positions, right? Especially in the area of prayer. And I think of, uh, you know, that's a challenge or um, something to all of us to say, you know, uh, prayer is such a, a vital thing that we, that we count on and we depend on. And so um, I would just say, if you're, if that's someone or something you uh, appreciate doing and God has called you to that, that uh, prayer is something uh, we would like to do together. Um, kettles, we, we are coming into our season of kettles. And as you can see, we did decorating. We thank all the decorators, the hangers of things. It has been great. It was a good morning of uh, decorating. And I'm going to send you on a treasure hunt after because I've lost my glasses somewhere in these decorations. And someone had said to me earlier that day, you should get one of those, you know, strings like old, older people wear for, and I, you know, I didn't have time to be twin then. And it was the same day. And of course I've lost them. So yes, they're dark blue. <laughs> um, and so the kettles, there's a sign-up sheet, right? Just on the first table as you come out this way, there's a sign-up sheet. There's a few shifts left. People have been already signing up. It's wonderful. This week, uh, you will have uh, perhaps taken, this week is Christmas candy for teens. We're collecting uh, donations of Christmas candy for teens. And next week, we'll be wrapping paper supplies. And so that's a bit of an insert. And... Uh, we just are really working towards, teens are hard to find gifts for. They sometimes get left out. Sometimes um, we do donations or we ask for toys for kids up to 10 or 11, and, and then we find it hard for the teens. So we really wanted to take that up and help them practically this year. So the Citadel is, is as you see at the tables out there, it's filling up with uh, donations. It's going very well. Uh, vaccine cards. So for those of you who will serve in any way um, as uh, any kind of an usher, greeter, uh, Bible study leader in the band or the choir, uh, any of those areas in any way, uh, serving on the kettles as well, you will need to be double vaccinated. And I would just need to see that, your vaccination card, and get the dose uh, when you had your second dose. Those are uh, some of the things that are happening now that the Salvation Army has, has a mandate for, um, but there is no there is no mandate for attending church, coming to Bible study groups or any other groups. Uh, just the leaders of anything to do with that or anyone on the platform. Uh, it's it's great. We, we like I've said, there's a big Christmas happening, becoming Christmas Center. Pat, Pat, you're here, Pat. 
I don't know if everybody knows that, but Pat has moved, transferred over from, uh, from Stan Hagen to Connection Point Church and Resource Center. He is now the Community Ministries Director. You want to put your hand up, Pat? Just so those... And, and I think they're having a whole lot of fun over there, it seems, from what I could tell when we come together in groups, doing really well together. So with High Point, uh, Salvation Army in Esquimalt, and with Connection Point, and Victoria Citadel, all three of us are working together to do this big check drive-through that will be happening, which we will need some volunteers for on, on the days we're all on, and the Naden Band as well. Those of you, uh, we didn't get to do the Naden Band last year, but this year it's on. And uh, an entrance fee is a toy. So we're going to get piles and piles of toys, and they're all going to come here first. And, uh, and then later on, we'll divide them up. But we're hoping to bury a tree with toys uh, this year for check drive through So it's very exciting. Uh, let's just uh, welcome ourselves and welcome the Holy Spirit to our service this morning. God, we are grateful to have a place to come and meet together and meet with you. Father, we um, come with all that we are carrying. For some of us, it is grief. For some of us, it's disappointment or frustration. And um, for others, there is rejoicing and there is joy. So we, we bring all of that, whatever it might be, a burden or a praise, God, we bring that to you today and we pray that for those things that are are holding us back bringing us down god that you would relieve us of those um, pressures that we may hand them over to you and allow you to replace them with peace and with hope this season uh, thank you god for meeting us here we play we pray that everything that we sing everything that we hear everything that we do that is done to your glory in your name jesus i pray Amen. We're going to read the scripture, Matthew 7, verses 21 to 27. Let's, let's uh, have the ladies read the first, and the men can follow in the, the first following. So ladies, not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven but only the one who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. Then I will tell them plainly, I never knew you. Away from me, you evildoers. Let's start over. Men on, this is your verse, men. Go. The rain came down, the streams rose, and the winds blew and began against that house. Yet it did not fall because it had its foundation on the rock. The rain came down, the streams rose, and the winds blew and beat against that house, and it fell with a great crash. And we pray today that uh, as God reveals his word, what we've just read, and Les shares that uh, those words are from, from you, Lord, and we thank you for them. After that scripture reading, you're probably thinking we're going to do the wise man built his house upon the rock, but we're not. Dorothy's, Dorothy played some lovely hymns during our prelude this morning, and now we're going to sing some of them together. It's a sing-along. So I would suggest if you feel like you want to stand, now is the time to stand, and we'll, um, we'll sing together. I don't think we're singing that one. Are we? In Christ Alone is the first one we're going to sing. Four verses each of three different songs. Thanks. 
If you ever feel you need to sit, then sit. But we're going to try and stand through all three songs. There we go. <laughs> In Christ alone, my hope is found. He is my life, my strength, my song. This cornerstone, this solid ground, grew through the fiercest drought and storm. My eyes are calm, my depths of peace. And striving seas, my hope return, my all in all. Here in the love of Christ, I stand. In Christ alone, who took on flesh, fullness of God in helpless men. This gift of love. And righteousness, scorned by the ones who came to save, till on the cross, as Jesus died, the wrath of God was satisfied, for every sin on him was laid, here in the death of Christ died. I think it's always uh, a blessing to hear somebody's story. Maybe we don't know who they are or, uh, you know, their background or whatever. And certainly uh, for uh, Dorothy and for Harold, it's very good to know uh, little pieces and glimpses into people's lives. Uh, I didn't have that full pleasure as many of you have, but I, I always think it's good. And and sometimes I think, gee whiz, if there's something that we could say to someone uh, before that time to make sure we let them know that they uh, are appreciated and uh, certainly their uh, character traits are uh, appreciated. 
thank you again uh, for all that uh, those who came and, and did uh, decorating. That was, uh, that was awesome. And uh, yeah, I could use them at my house as well. <laughs> Someone said they, they didn't volunteer to come to their house, but uh, uh, that, would be, uh, that would be an awesome thing, so for sure. This passage of scripture that uh, was just read or that we looked at really is to me, and, and, and please don't ever like I'm, you know, the guiding authority, but uh, to me is one of the most challenging uh, passages in scripture. Uh, tough for people to put their heads around and to fully understand what it is that God uh, is wanting of us and in us and, and through us. And, and uh, it brings up a couple of key things uh, in our lives or for us to consider. Uh, it was interesting chatting with Tom and he was talking about, uh, he's asking his uh, study group questions. Uh, you know, not only questions about biblically with regards to our church, but biblically about themselves. Because I think sometimes we we kind of shuffle off the questions of life, not understanding really they're for me. You know, when I look in the mirror, I don't see Kathy, I see me. And so when I look in the mirror, it's not this beautiful lady that I married and loved, it's just me. You know, hair falling out, you know, all those kinds of things. But it, the reality is that's who, who I am. And I think sometimes we need to be willing to ask ourselves tough questions, tough spiritual questions. And uh, that's sort of what we're going to talk about uh, this morning. There used to be a saying, and maybe you can answer the question, uh, hand grenades and uh, horseshoes uh, were the only two things that, that almost really work for, you know, almost uh, uh, doesn't count only in horseshoes, because you get close to the ringer, or in hand grenades where it blows everything up. And that's where almost only uh, counts in life. And yet Jesus confirmed that truth when he cautioned his followers, you and I, this is really, really important. He cautioned us not to take shortcuts. He cautioned us to not take shortcuts. Often if you go on a hike, uh, you'll see a hike and it'll be a path and it'll say, stay on the path. Stay on the path. And uh, I, I remember more than once getting too close to the edge and what? Falling, slipping down. And Jesus cautioned us, you and I, not to take shortcuts, but to simply live and walk out the life, the life of faith. Friends, nothing short of a daily devoted relationship with Jesus will cut it. Anything else is really known as almost Christian. Almost Christian. Now, I want you to, to understand that uh, it was interesting. June uh, uh, showed me a picture of her mom and uh, my sister uh, from back there. So, you know, it kind of brings up a, a, a few memories and, and fun memories and stuff like that. But I, I, I want you to know that when I grew up, one of the most uh, famous words that I used to always use was almost. The word almost. And it used to drive my parents crazy. And it kind of worked this way. My mom would say, Les, are you up yet? And I would say, almost. And she would say to me uh, things like, is your homework done? And I would shout back, almost. She would say to me, is your room clean? And I would shout back, almost almost. 
Now, the, the, the real problem is, is, is that may have uh, kind of worked a little bit in those days and in those times. But as I grew older, I kept the word almost in my vocabulary. You see, we can be almost Christian. Where we're doing the things that we think. We ought to do singing the songs that we need to sing, showing up where we need to show up and still not be really connecting to God who loves us. Kind of seems weird, doesn't it? And yet it's so true. Open your Bibles uh, to uh, Matthew chapter seven. If you have them there with you, it'll be coming up on the screen again. And let me give you a little background here. In Matthew chapter 5, Jesus teaches on relationships, relationships with God and with others. Okay? And then in chapter 6, Jesus is calling you and I to lose our religion. To set aside the rules, regulations, and all our denominational trappings that we place ahead of him in life. And he wants us to really focus on who God is calling us to be. Think about that. The things that have creeped ahead of him. And uh, in, in chapter 6, he's, he's saying, this is what I need you to be. Forget all the other stuff. This is what I need you to be. And he wants us to set aside all the religious stuff and develop a deep relationship with him. And then in chapter 7, it says this, Jesus is telling us that this, that there is this life that he has designed for us, a life that's full of abundance. In John chapter 10, he calls it a life that overflows. Have you ever met someone that's so full of happiness and joy, you just kind of get that feeling? You know, where, where they're, it's kind of fun just to be around them. You, you might not even get the joke or, or what the happiness is all about, but they're just bubbling over. We used to sing a song when I was a kid. It was called, ba 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 bubbling ba 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 bubbling Jesus' love is bubbling over. You won't hear me sing this again. But, but you, get the, you get the point. The whole point is, is that God designed for us a life that would be full of abundance. And, and scripture says that it, it needs to bubble over. It needs to bubble over. But there's obstacles to this, this lifestyle. <laughs> As there always is, there's obstacles to this lifestyle. And they seem to get in the way of the kind of life that God wants us to live. And we let them get in the way. And in chapter 7, Jesus is reminding us to be careful about the obstacles in life. Things that get us off track of who uh, God wants and needs us to be. Matthew 7 and 21 says this. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven. Wow. And then it goes on to say, but only those who do the will of my Father who is in heaven. So unless we're walking out the will of God in our lives, it's not, it's not good enough. And then it says this, many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name and in your name drive out demons and in your name perform many miracles? And then listen to this. Then I will tell them plainly, I never knew you. Away from me, you evildoers. Friends, for me, those nine words are the most frightening words in Scripture. Those are the most frightening words that, that I, I, I find in Scripture. 
Especially that last sentence right there that I never knew you away from me, you evildoers. He's talking to me as much as he's talking to you. He's talking to, to those who, uh, who think they are, are somewhere, but they're not. And, and it says this, those are terrifying words. Because if I met the folks described in those verses, if I met them on the street or in a church, I would think that they would be on their way to heaven. That's what I would think. That they would be on their way to heaven. I mean, those are the kind of people that I would think would get a front row seat in heaven, in fact. But verse 21 says, Jesus calls them evildoers. Evildoers. Now that's scary for me. Because if those folks that were described in those verses aren't going to make it, who will? Will I? Will you? You see, Jesus is very clear about what the real problem is. It's not so much that these people weren't doing good things. They were doing some amazing things. The problem was is that Jesus didn't know them. Jesus says, hey, we haven't hung out uh, together lately. We ha you haven't invited me to your dinner table when you sit down with your family. You didn't take me on vacation with you. You left me at home. Occasionally I go to church with you, but then I don't get to see you again until next Sunday. That's what he's, he's talking about here. And Jesus says, I, I, I don't even know you anymore. You see, my goal in life, friends, is to stand before God and hear the words, well done, good and faithful servant. Not, I never knew you. Not, I never knew you. So how do we know that God knows us? How do we know that we're not just almost Christian, but that we are absolutely Christian? Listen for a second. We can know every verse in the Bible, but still miss out on the power of God's word in our lives. Think about that. You see, we, 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 we're moving through generations that think it's all about learning uh, under knowledge. Let's just know a little bit more. And, and yet we can know every word and still miss out on the power of God in our lives. We can come to church every week and not have an intimate, committed relationship with God. Where church just becomes duty. I can go to Bible study every week, but if I have missed out on knowing God, I have missed out on the only thing that gives life meaning and significance. I have missed out on the most important thing in life. James 2 and 19, it's going to come up on the screen. Let's read it together. Ready? Go. You see, friends, it's, it's not just knowing uh, uh, about God. It's got to be, do we know God? I, I meet people all the time who are, uh, what I would say, are schol biblical scholars. They can, you know, kind of tell me everything I need to know and more. But they don't know God. Now, I don't know about you. Uh, you know, I'm getting older. And, uh, you know, my life uh, could be uh, coming to an end 
uh, any time. And, and I don't know about you, but I, I, I like to think I want to be known as one who knew God. In John 17, verse 3, it's defined for us what eternal life really is. Because I think we have this, this conception or misconception of what eternal life really is. And in John 17, 3, it says this, Now this is eternal life, that they know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. So here's Jesus breaking into our nice understanding of what, uh, you know, Christianity is really all about and, and what eternal life is all about. And, and you know, we kind of think if we cross this line to that line, then we're in, we're okay, we're, we're going to make it. And he's re redefining what eternal life really is. And he says this, it's not about getting to heaven someday, because that's what I often hear. It's just really about getting to heaven someday, but he redefines it. And he says this, it's about really knowing God today today. Let me just say that again. He says it's not about getting to heaven someday. It's about really knowing God today. You see, I always thought I had to die before I achieved this thing called eternal life. But here Jesus is telling us that it begins today. And it's all about being in a relationship with him. We don't want to be almost Christian, but we want to know that we are absolutely Christian. So to me, I kind of took to heart what Tom was, was saying, and he said it to me before about questions. I, I ask myself some questions as I consider where I am with God. And the first question I ask myself is this, am I staying connected to the heart of God? You might want to write that down. Are you staying connected to the heart of God? Jeremiah 24 and 7 says this, I will give them a heart, what, to know me, and that I am the Lord. They will be my people, and I will be their God, for they will return to me, with all of their heart. So here's the good news. Not only did God send us his son. So that we could have eternal life. So that we could stay connected to God. But God sent us the Holy Spirit. Who is our constant presence. Within us and wherever we go. Because sometimes I think you know we can shake God. Right? We think, you know, if I can get away with this because, you know, he's... Oh, the Holy Spirit is our constant presence. Wherever we go, whatever we do, he is there with us. So wherever we are, even on those hard days... Have you ever had a hard day? Yeah? Uh, even when you, you've dug yourself a deep pit, have you ever dug a deep pit for yourself? I know I have. Or when you have tried to run far away from God and the people in your life, God's Holy Spirit is the presence within us that keeps us connected to the heart of God. That's it. You see, God has offered us some, some great tools uh, to kind of help us out. How many of you got a toolkit, or do you have one? 
you know, at home, you know, a hammer, a screwdriver, the basic things. And I, I just want you to know that I don't have that. So if you come to my house looking for it, you won't find it. And uh, my wife always says, make friends with people who are handy. And, uh, and, and so, you know, that's kind of what I've taken to heart. But I don't have tools and stuff like that. But God says to us, I'm going to give you a tool kit. I'm going to give you a tool kit that will help you out. That will help you stay connected with the heart of God. And one of those uh, tools is the power of prayer. One of those tools in the kit is the power of prayer. Prayer is us having an honest conversation with God. Not a religious conversation, but an honest conversation. Another tool in the kit is daily devotions. It means getting into God's word every day for more than just learning. I recommend people that when doing devotions, they don't use study aids. Devotions was never uh, kind of meant for you to, to pull out, you know, all these things. And, and that's not devotions. That's, that's a learning time. Devotions is not your time to explore God. It's God's opportunity to explore you. You see, when we read the Word of God, that's God searching our hearts. Searching our hearts. The third kind of tool in the kit is worship. What a powerful tool that keeps people connected to the heart of God. I don't mean just showing up to church on Sunday. I mean, we can go to church every week and still miss out on the power of really knowing God. I'm talking about a lifestyle where I do uh, everything that I do is giving God the priority in my life. It's not just a Sunday thing. It's an everyday thing. It's a lifestyle. The next question I often ask myself is this. Am I concerned about the things that really matter to God? Ask yourself that. Are you concerned about the things that matter to God? Uh, I'm definitely concerned about the things that affect me, right? That matter to me. But am I concerned and, and does it matter uh, what I, uh, do I ma uh, care about what uh, things really matter to God? Do I care about the things that God cares about? Does my heart break over the things that God's heart breaks over? Do I get angry over the things that God gets angry over? Or am I just focused on myself? And I don't worry about the other stuff. Listen to Jeremiah 22 and 16. He says this. It says this, he defended the cause of the poor and needy, and so all went well. Is that not what it means to know me, declares the Lord? He defended the cause of the poor and needy, and so all went well. It's, is that not what it means to know me, declares the Lord? God is saying to us, friends... If you want to know me, you need to get involved in the things that I'm involved in. If you want to know me, you need to care about the people that I care about. They actually have a name in Scripture, the poor and the needy. Wow. That's our calling. Those are things that God cares about. And when we care about the things that God cares about, then we're really getting to know God. And the last question I often ask myself is this. Am I committed to developing my own relationship? 
Am I committed to developing my own relationship with God? You see, I meet people all the time who were saved at the age of six, and now they're late in life, and they're talking about when they were, came to Christ at six years of age, and, and I, I sometimes want to go, but where has he been for the last 60 years? I can ask that of myself. Where has he been? Friends, what is your God story? Think about that. What if on the way out, we, we said, hey, uh, you're just going to come out one person at a time, and, and you're going to walk out that door, and uh, wh you're going to be asked the question, what is your God story? Would you be able to give it? Would you be able to tell it? What has God done in your life, not just 60 years ago or when you were six, but what has God done in your life today? Are we committed to developing our relationship with God? Are we really wanting to experience God or have we been spiritually coasting? Have you ever done that? I know I have. Spiritual, co spiritual coasting at times in my life. I can usually tell, you know, where I am in my devotional uh, life. I can usually tell where I am in my prayer life. I can usually tell where, where I am in these, these moments in, in, in life. And, and, and often we, we get ourselves into these things where we're so caught up in the stuff that we forget the one who we're supposed to focus on. Mark 12 and 30 says this, Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength. Let's just read it together. Ready? Go. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. What, I, what I've come to, and I try and be honest with you and and, uh, you know, to tell you kind of where the reality of walking with Jesus is. It's not always an easy thing. But, but what I have come to realize is that uh, I can love the Lord almost with all of my heart. I can love the Lord with almost all of my strength. But that's not what I want. That's not what I want. I want to love the Lord God with all of my heart and all of my strength. I found a, a prayer, and I, I, I don't know if I've shared this with you uh, before, but it's found in Philippians 3, 7 to 11. And uh, I, I, I want to read it as we close this time. And I, I can't help but think that, you know, in this time, are we kind of prepared to be kind of honest with ourselves and, and honest with God? Because I, I really think otherwise, you know, just gathering is, is okay, but, but unless we really kind of get honest with God and go, hey, Lord, there's areas in my life that need to be worked on. There's areas in my life that I'm struggling with. I'm hung up on this. I'm hung up on that. I'm hung up on the other thing. And yet your word says again and again, I need to know you. I need to know you. Now, this uh, passage really is a powerful statement of what it means to know God. And I want to read it for you. I once thought these things were valuable. But now I consider them worthless because of what Christ has done. Yes, everything else is worthless 
when compared to the infinite value of knowing Jesus Christ as my Lord. For his sake, I have discarded everything else, counting it all as garbage so that I could gain Christ and become one with him. I no longer count on my own righteousness through obeying the law. Rather, I become righteous through faith in Christ. For God's way of making us right with himself depends on faith. I want to know Christ and experience the mighty power that raised him from the dead. I want to suffer with him, sharing in his death, so that one way or another, I will experience the resurrection from the dead. Amen. Not almost, but absolutely. Not almost, but absolutely. I don't know what you've thought about this morning, but what, what has got your attention more than knowing God? Not knowing about God, because I'm sure there are many people in this room who know a lot about God, but I, I'm asking us the question about knowing him the one who died, the one who gave us his spirit to be our constant presence, the one who says eternal life begins with a relationship today. Today. And, and uh, I pray that you're just not waiting for the day you die you know, that that be the day. I think we would like to celebrate the abundant life with you now. Now. We're not going to play any music or anything like that. But I wonder this morning if uh, if there's anyone here who, you know, might just say, I, I want more than what I have been experiencing. I want God not only to know me, but I want to know him. And maybe that means setting our sights off of all the other stuff. There's lots of it in life. And just to simply say, Lord, I want to know you. I want to know you today. You say, well, I, I committed my life to Jesus when I was six. I want to say, hey, that's a, that's a great thing. But maybe you're like me. You kind of are saying, uh, I've had to make one or two or three or four or ten times of committing myself once again. And saying, Lord, let's just keep starting the race and keep starting that path. And so maybe this morning there's uh, a few that want to come and just stand up here, uh, you know, as best we can. And we're just going to encourage you in prayer. And it doesn't, uh, lots of stuff goes along with people coming for. This is not about bad people come. This is about people connecting with God. And so we want to give that opportunity if that's 
what you would like. I'm just going to close my eyes and be still for a moment. And if you feel like you want to come and stand here, I'll wait. And uh, I would really encourage you to feel comfortable to come and do that. And then we'll have a prayer. Whether there's people here or there's not, we will still have a prayer to uh, thank God for uh, what he continues to do in our lives. So I'm just going to be still and quiet. And if you would like to come and join me, I would really encourage you to do so. Lord, we think of your word and saying that you have prepared for us an abundant life, one that overflows, one that flows out from us. Lord, help us to to experience that, that we would know you and experience you in, in, a, in a fresh way every day. Lord, we commit our lives to you. We thank you. We thank you that you stir our hearts. That's the role of your spirit. We are so grateful for that. Our ever presence. And so, Lord, we ask today that as we give back to you our lives, that you would receive us, that you would know that we love you and we want to serve you with all our hearts and with all of our strength. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 God bless you guys. Yeah. Our final song. Be still for the presence of the Lord.
Father, we come to you and, uh, God, we believe, we know that you are here with us. We know that your spirit is moving. Whether we took the opportunity to come forward and stand and acknowledge that that is what we desire for our lives, or whether we are still, we're sitting in our seats, God, it doesn't matter. When we ask for you to come in, to transform, to come back to you, God, to renew our commitment, uh, God, you hear us and you answer that prayer. We pray that today as we renew our relationship with you, and I think that we all have that uh, within ourselves, that we need to continually do that as we live our lives in, in these days, God, and we are sometimes frustrated and confused about it all. We know that you are the one who can see us through so we depend on you, God. We pray that today we would continue to allow you to be our guide, that we would uh, act and work in your strength, God. Bless today, bless the service. In your name, Jesus, we pray. Amen. <laughs>